the Joe Rogan experience. So you're working there, and while you're working there, you're under this crazy schedule. Uh, forgive me for explaining your story, but you uh, would get these phone calls. You would have to go to the to the airport at 11 p.m., and your wife started thinking that you were having an affair. Yeah, apparently so. Um, now, I did give my permission to have, you know, as, as part of the, you know, security clearance process, um, I, I gave written permission to have the phones monitored and things of that sort. So they weren't doing any covert stuff. They, um, you know, with any Q, Q clearance, or which is civilian top secret clearance or military top secret clearance, they go talk to friends and, you know, Place, places you've been, make sure you're not connected to foreign countries. But, you know, monitoring your phone is nothing unusual. However, they insisted that, you know, you don't even talk to your loved one, to your partner, to your wife, whatever, about what's going on. So she was essentially in the dark and didn't know the phone was being monitored. Well, part of the security clearance is that not only do you not have any connections to foreign countries and aren't a maniac, but you have to have a stable home life, too. Uh, well, she started having an affair with a flight instructor. Now, they were monitoring this on the phone, and they knew it, and I didn't. So they stopped me coming in, and their attitude at the time was, um, we need to see how this is going to play out and if Lazar is going to get a little weird or anything. So let's just, you know, hold him off from coming in and... Uh, you know, see what happens. And they explained this to you, what was happening? <laughs> well, after the fact, yeah, because time kind of went on, and there were guys that were following me around, and I started getting a little concerned, going, well, Chet, are they booting me out of the project? And if so, they're not just going to let me hang out at home and go get a new job knowing what I know. So as time went on, I started getting a little concerned, and... I took my closest friends and just kind of got together. And I said, hey, remember that job I told you about? This is what's going on. And, uh, like, you don't need to take my word for it. Uh, Wednesday night, we need to all go out here. I want to show you what's going on. So I took everybody, and we went out to, um, remember, since I had the test flight schedule, and went outside the base, um, out into the desert, and so everybody could see you know, one of the high performance tests. And, uh, you know, it left quite an imprint on everybody. So they knew I wasn't. And there's videos crazy. of these tests, right? Yeah, but remember, this is in the, it's in, in the dark in the 80s with a big monster sized camcorder and you got, mm -hmm. you know, a bright light jumping around. But uh, yeah, I mean, we did video of it, but there's no, by today's standards, it's. But is you know, your video specifically available, the video that you took? Yeah, well, George Knapp has it. It's is it online? It Do you know? I have no idea. Jeremy? Yeah, I show clips of it in my film. It's right. it's online, and someone did a deep analysis of it. Uh, it was interesting uh, to just take a look at how... Pull this microphone up to your face. Keep about a fist from your face. All right. Um, you know, to see how his video looks now, but as far as video evidence, I mean, we're, we are talking 80s camp horse. The most important thing is the human story here. Everybody that he took up there on three separate occasions, they don't all like each other. They don't all talk. They all agree on one thing. They saw something that night at the exact point in time and space that Bob Lazar said, and remember, this is 17, 15, 17 miles south of Area 51. No one even knew really about Area 51. We're talking Papoose Lake, and they all agree. They saw something that night they had never seen before, and they've never seen since right when he said it. So that's one of like the six things where I'm like, how did he know? You can dismiss him. I, I tried to dismiss it, but some things we can't get around, and, and there's about five or six of them. How did he know about those? If Jamie wants to find that video right now, what would he look under? Bob Lazar, UFO, S4, Area 51, just kind of like that. Uh, so it's like the S4 UFO video, Bob Lazar, and a guy does an analysis, but you're ana analyzing these 80s videos. Right. He, he, from the very beginning, Bob never said, I have proof of my story and I'm going to tell the world. He said at the very beginning, I cannot prove my story. That's not why I'm telling this. George Knapp convinced him to tell people, and, and he lived through it. And I, I didn't believe it either until I, I talked with George. Okay, so you you film these this test flight, one test flight, and then you get caught. 
Actually, it was, I think, the third time because it, we went out there the first time. <clears throat> everybody saw it. Everybody was amazed because it did some radical maneuvers and um, – you know, everybody had a lot the, to say the about it. The maneuvers that I've seen, I've seen the video. It doesn't – I don't think there's something we have now that does that. No. It's in terms and of like a human piloted craft. I mean, I don't know, obviously, what the government – No, it's, it's impossible. Nothing can move like that. And remember, we didn't start filming from the very beginning. You know, it, the, the, we were waiting for something, you know, to happen. The craft took off and then came flying at us, stopped, you know, turned at a right angle, flew back. And then, you know, after it did some, you know, amazing stuff we like, to get the camera. And then you know, we started filming. So it doesn't have all of it on there. It just has some. The way um, I describe it to my friends and they said, what does this look like? I said, take a laser pointer and then have a wall and then move it around the wall. Like, you know how it moves around yeah. the wall? It doesn't seem like it has anything to do with inertia or physics or it's not in, impeded in any way by the atmosphere. Yeah. That's what it looks like. You're essentially separated from reality, as crazy as that sounds, with uh, being in, in case its own, own gravitational envelope. I inertia is not going to affect it. And, you know, this is, uh, this is how some of those recent sightings of Commander David Fravor – I'm sure you've heard of the yes. Tic Tac U UFO. I mean, he describes exactly the the thing operates exactly the way I was describing. That's why uh, he was interested to talk to me. Um, but we saw this, and you know, on the way home, it's like, hey, we got away with it. We should try it again the next test flight day. So this became a thing to do, and I think it was on the the third time that we got caught. I mean, we started becoming a little careless i think we took a motor home out there and, you know i mean it was like the stupidest thing you could took possibly grill, imagine started tailgating yeah it was ridiculous and um again you're in your 20s yeah and you know what was funny was um we went out there and my friend gene huff and i were leaning on the front of a vehicle and just for some reason we just started talking shit like uh well i hope they realize that uh i don't remember what we were saying but you know that something about attacking the base or something along those lines and stealing the the craft or so, something like that so we crazy and um then about 20 feet in front of us we see a little green light fall on the ground and roll to us and unbeknownst to us now it's pitch black you can't see your hand in front of your face there were a bunch of guards standing right out there and they had a night vision scope where they were like from here to the wall, looking at us, listening to us, and the guy dropped it, and the scope rolled over to us, and you could see the green screen. <laughs> you know, we turned the lights on, and all these guys are there. So it was uh, – Whoa. Yeah, yeah. So we did incredibly stupid stuff and got caught, as we should have, because So it was when they catch you and they bring you in, then what happens? Well, I went in for debriefing. The following day, I went to Indian Springs Air Force Base, which is kind of a defunct – base that they used to use at the nuclear test site. And this is when they brought out um, the transcript of the phone call with my wife. And, you know, they sat me down and we said, you know, when we meant to keep the secret, we meant you can't tell your friends, right? You know, and it just being sarcastic and trying to. Mm -hmm. um, and then they got real serious. Uh, but this is where they you know, took the transcript out and were reading me what uh, my wife and, you know, her friend were talking about. And, uh, I don't know, it was a hard time. So what happens from there? What do they do with you? Why don't they arrest you? Why I don't, don't, they arrest I don't know. Friends? I don't know why. I'm not sure they exactly they knew what to do. But they did let me go that night. And I went home. And th this is kind of when the most stressful part started. Because you're realizing that you're being monitored yeah, 24-7. Now, yeah, now I know not only am I being monitored, but now I know I'm in trouble. And uh, it wasn't a short time after that that I contacted, you know, at that time, the only investigative reporter I had heard of in Las Vegas was George Knapp. And, um, you know, told him some of the story because I had no idea what the hell was going to happen at that point. So George Knapp tries to dissect your story, tries to find holes in it, tells it, 
puts it online and makes everybody aware of it, and that's how I found out about it. Yeah, to make a long story short. Yeah. <laughs> what, what happens, yeah, to really make a long story short, what happens from there on? I mean, do they contact you and say, hey, Bob, it's probably a good idea if you shut up? Oh, well, Did they try to label you as crazy? Was there... There were, boy, there were a lot of things that happened at, you know, between that point. Um, I'm leaving out a lot of stuff uh, to fill in the story. Uh, we'd have to go back to Los Alamos and, and well, I really don't want to talk about that. The um, top secret weapons stuff that you were working on. No, I'm talking about the 115. Mm -hmm. um, well, I don't know. I have to think about how I'd. What is the problem? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to get myself into more trouble by admitting something. So um, I just have to dance around a couple. He was okay. rated just during the filming of the movie. People yeah. thought it was The movie's great, by the way. Thanks, Joe. And uh, it's on Netflix right now if anybody wants to check it out. <laughs>